we have somebody else joining us. All right, we'll get started. As we all know, Hurricane Ida made landfall right here in Lafouche, Terrebonne and Grand Isle on midday, August 29th, 2021, with 150 mile per hour sustained winds at landfall. And the most brutal part was that this weather continued for nine hours as Hurricane Ida came through our area. Um, really just like uh, unbelievable uh, winds and destruction as it tore through um, Lafouche, Terrebonne and Grand Isle. While much of national attention focused in the days following Hurricane Ida on the New Orleans area, we all know that this was in fact our storm. It was our people in Lafouche, Terrebonne and Grand Isle who were hurting. It was our communities that had the most tragic destruction. Our homes and businesses had been destroyed. And it was us, the people of, of the Bayou region who would have to recover. And of course, we all know the pictures that we faced the next day um, as the sun rose on August 30th and we saw the destruction around us. For days and weeks following that, we had people right here in our community living in tents, living in cars, um, unbelievable living conditions as they didn't want to leave their property and really had nowhere else to go. The, the scene was extremely tragic for so many of our residents. Two days before the storm on August 27th, Bayou Community Foundation activated our Bayou Recovery Fund for Hurricane Ida relief. We knew after seeing pictures from Hurricane Laura just one year before that the devastation would be tremendous and that it was up to us, Bayou Community Foundation, as a bucket of philanthropy for our area to make sure that donors across the country knew about what our community was facing and had a way to give to help our recovery. So this bucket, as our founders uh, developed by the Community Foundation to be 10 years ago, became a source of aid for so many nonprofits who were delivering assistance to our residents. We asked for help and you answered with over $8 million in gifts to the Bayou Recovery Fund for Hurricane Ida relief. And here's a picture of how we have spent, oops, I'm sorry about that, how we have spent Sorry, how we have spent those donations so far. We have invested them in relief and recovery efforts. Um, and this gives you a breakdown of where those contributions have gone to date. So far, Bayou Community Foundation has invested $5,182,000 $1,518 in nonprofit relief and recovery services, helping all residents of Lafouche, Terrebonne, and Grand Isle. The greatest use of our funds so far, over $2.6 million, have gone to housing, and that includes temporary housing, campers, home repairs, and rebuilding. This is a priority for our area, especially now as our recovery continues into year two. Um, and we'll talk a lot more about that housing effort in a little, a little while later on in the program. Food and supplies, of course, that represented our initial relief efforts. $1.15 million was used to fund non-perishable food distribution, gasoline, hot meals, water, and cleaning and hygiene supplies. Um, oops. Sorry about that. And um, as I mentioned, that was very early on was the, the highest amount of um, food and supplies were distributed were in those first few weeks and months following the storm. Individual and family assistance, $620,000 
will fund, um, has funded case management, rent and utility assistance, transportation, and social services. Um, this has been especially important as our community transitioned from relief and recovery. We, a large grant in, in the $620,000 is a $500,000 commitment we made to Catholic Charities of Homa Thibodeau to conduct, um, to conduct case management in, in all of our areas. Through that, they're able to provide financial assistance and other um, help to local residents. This money was also used for transportation, particularly for um, patients needing medical attention outside of our area um, immediately following the storm. And individual and family assistance was also provided to help organizations such as The Haven provide uh, safe alternative housing for some of their residents who needed a, a safe place for the women and children to live uh, right after the storm. Um, Nonprofit profit and public service recovery. Thanks to your gifts, Bayou Community Foundation has been able to invest $479,000 in grants to help nonprofits make their own repairs and replace the equipment um, to, in, in, their, in order for them to deliver critical services to our residents. Uh, we, we quickly realized that while nonprofits were working very, very hard to help our local residents, they suffered much loss themselves. Many of their buildings um, had significant damage, roof damage, were flooded, they lost um, important computer equipment, et cetera. And so we worked quickly in the fall to, um, we worked quickly in the fall to give out grants to nonprofits to make some of those repairs and replace some of that equipment. And we also helped public service agencies uh, replace some of very cr critical equipment as well, fire stations, police stations, et cetera, um, who had lost equipment in the storm. And finally, education. Um, with the help of uh, many of our donors, in particular uh, Chevron, Bayou Community Foundation was able to direct $310,000 to education recovery to fund classroom supplies and classroom equipment for students and teachers returning to our most impacted schools. And we'll talk a little bit more about each of these areas now. Um, first of all, food and supplies. As I said, this was the primary effort of Bayou Community Foundation uh, at the beginning uh, in the first few weeks and months, I guess through about um, October, early November as so many people in our area lacked food, water, electricity, um, and needed all the help they could get with regard to food and supplies. Bayou Community Foundation kicked it off one week after the storm when we had massive gasoline distributions in Southern Terrebonne and Southern Lafourche. And as I mentioned, uh, food banks, churches, and so many nonprofits in our area started collecting food and supplies and distributing those at various sites throughout um, Lafourche, Terrebonne, and Grand Isle. Diapers and formula were also in short supply and of course much needed by young uh, families and their children. So many of our nonprofits stepped up and filled that need as well as shoes, clothes, and school uniforms once schools uh, came back online in, um, and in person in October, November of last year. One organization that played a pivotal role in this food and supply distribution, among many other things, is Bless Your Heart nonprofit in Lafouche. Bayou Community Foundation was delighted to provide a Bless Your Heart with a few grants over the past year that really helped them um, with their relief and recovery efforts. Uh, the first grant for Bless Your Heart was $25,000 for food and supplies that were distributed um, out of the LaRose Civic Center. $20,000 for a program called Mattresses on a Mission 
to help families who have lost bedding and mattresses have at least um, a soft place to lay their head at night. And then finally, $250,000 for campers uh, to families who had lost their homes and needed a place to stay as soon as possible. And I'm delighted to have with us this afternoon, Hillary Danos with the Bless Your Heart nonprofit. Hillary, if you could unmute yourself and uh, welcome to yes, our meeting today. And uh, please tell us just a bit more about the work you've been able to do and um, the current work you're doing now as we enter year two of recovery. Okay, well, first of all, we wanted to thank all of the donors and um, the Bayou Community Foundation because of course, none of our efforts would be possible without y'all. Um, this really touches my heart. Um, all of these grants were very, very appreciated. We were able to supply a ton of food and supplies. We were able to help out with getting mattresses for people. Um, we had people that were just laying on the ground. They were laying in tents. We had people who were just on the floors of their homes. But the thing that touches my heart the most is our grant that we received for $250,000. Um, so our director, Jure, had originally was going to apply for $50,000 and her brother had told her, you know what, Jure, shoot for the stars. Like, what's the worst they're going to do? Tell you no. And we ended up applying for $250,000 and that wish was granted. And to this day, I will never forget the very first camper that we were able to buy with that money was for a little boy who goes to the same school as my daughter. And the principal had reached out and said that they were in need of a home. They were living in like this makeshift shed. So we went over there to evaluate and I'll never forget this family was living on the floor of their shed and they had an air mattress they were sleeping on, but it had gotten so cold that they popped the air mattress and cut it and ended up putting it around the wall to block the wind. They were laying just on the wood. They were using that air mattress to block the wind because it was so cold outside. And the day that we delivered that camper, I never saw someone cry like that. I was in tears. The little boy was crying, the mom. And to this day, they may not have the money to help contribute for different things, but every event we have, anything we do, she is the first one there to donate and like donate her time and help because she's so appreciative of the fact that we were able to supply her with the campers. So again, thank you because of y'all, we were able to do that for her plus 13 other families. Thank you, Hillary for sharing that with us. And of course, for all of the work that um, you and Jere and all the nonprofits, all the volunteers with Bless Your Heart Nonprofit have been able to do. Thank you. Thank you so much. All right. The next area of our grants is individual assistance. And this includes uh, several different kinds of, uh, of work, case management, as I mentioned before, rent and utility assistance, transportation, especially for patients needing uh, transportation to medical appointments, counseling, and social services. Um, it also includes debris removal. The picture you'll see here um, is a veterans group who work to help other veterans uh, clear debris from their property, um, pick up limbs, and, and provide basic supplies to them at their homes. So we really appreciate um, all of their work. With us here today to talk about um, their work at individual assistance, as well as um, a unique appliance replacement program is Mr. Bob Stewart with Friends of Grand Isle. Uh, Friends of Grand Isle received two grants from Bayou Community Foundation, $50,000 in September to assist first responders on the island uh, who were there during the storm and obviously right after the storm. Um, to serve the island, but they needed tremendous help and Friends of Grand Isle was there for that. Um, the second program, $89,000 for an appliance replacement program to help people who lost appliances in the storm um, as they had damages to their home, make some of those basic um, replacements to um, return to some form of normalcy on the island. So Bob, if you're there. I'm here. Uh, why don't you go ahead and tell us a little bit about the work on these two programs? Okay. Uh, Friends of Grand Isle is a, is a not-for-profit. We're entirely volunteers, but we do have about 160 members 
from from the Grand Isle community and from people that 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 vacation there. So we applied for first responders, and these we found that there were 38 of them. This is a uh, 38 first responders from fire department, from the ambulance services, from the police. All of them were there before the storm, during the storm, and after the storm. And so we, we applied to uh, uh, Bayou Community Foundation for $50,000 to assist first responders. And we, we've developed a, uh, an application form for them to fill out. And in that application, we wanted to know something about them, where we could contact them, how to contact them, but also uh, what were the losses on the island? The island has, had been just devastated. I mean, this is this is the poster child for for global change. Uh, you know, storms and sea level rise and everything like that. But we found that almost half of them had had severe damages to their homes, and that uh, another the other half had moderate damage to their homes. Some had a little bit, but not 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 too bad. Not too bad. So we uh, we developed that, and we gave a um, we gave money to to those first responders, and um, that that they were very thrilled and thanked the thanked us as well as the Bayou Community Foundation for providing the funds. After that, we developed an appliance replacement pro program. Uh, one of the things that happened in, in the storm is that when houses got wiped out, their appliances went with it. So we got 89000 from Bayou Community Foundation for that. We're very thankful. And we developed a voucher system where the people could, could apply for a, a voucher and they would get, a, a say, $2,000 toward an appliance uh, through that voucher system. And then we would pay pay the we didn't pay them directly. We paid a commercial company providing the the, the uh, appliances. It seemed to work. They were very thrilled with it too. Um, we had 134 applications for uh, appliances, and I think with a little help from other other foundations as well, we were able to get to all of them. But the primary one was was uh, by a community foundation. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you very much, Bob, and thank you as well for all the work y'all are doing on the island. All right, the next area is nonprofit and public service recovery. Um, the picture you see here is Plymouth Rock Baptist Church here in Homa, um, which sustains a lot of damage. If we could please ask everyone to mute themselves. Please. Um, so this is Plymouth Rock Baptist Church in Homa. Um, it sustained major damages and um, they, in addition to serving as a church and a community center, they're also a very, very, very busy food bank. And um, they received a grant as well as many other nonprofits to make repairs to their facility in order to be able to continue services uh, to the community and, and food bank and food distribution continue to be uh, sorely needed in our area. And so we're very happy to support any of those nonprofits who continue to do that important work. Another grant um, we gave in that area is um, to the Grand Isle Police Department, a $67,500 grant for police cars um, to replace three cars that were lost in the storm. And we were very delighted to be able to help the island um, replace those cars and uh, beef up their force. Uh, once again, they suffered tremendous loss of, of their vehicles and, and so many, um, so much property during Hurricane Ida. In education recovery, uh, as I mentioned, we issued grants totaling $310,000 to five nonprofits in our area who are supporting the return of students to the classroom by helping teachers replace supplies and equipment that were essential to that learning process. Um, those nonprofits include Lafouche Education Foundation, Terrebonne Foundation for Academic Excellence, Grand Isle School, St. Matthew's Episcopal School, and Catholic Schools of the Diocese of Homa Thibodeau. And I wanna recognize Chevron 
for um, being a big uh, sponsor and donor to our education efforts uh, with regard to recovery. One of those grants, as I mentioned, went to Terrebonne Foundation for Acad Academic Excellence. Um, with $100,000, TFA has been providing grants to teachers and teachers and schools that were most impacted by the storm in order to replace classroom equipment and supplies. This is a picture of uh, South Terrebonne High School that recently opened um, for the school year back at South Terrebonne in Berg um, in temporary buildings for, for a couple of years. But um, our grant is helping teachers replace all that equipment and supplies that they lost in each of their individual classrooms. So with us here today is Ashley Barahona. Ashley, um, feel free to jump in and tell us a little bit, bit more about what TFA has done in recovery. Thank you, Jennifer, um, for inviting me to be part of this conversation. Um, for many of us, I think we've learned to juggle multiple hats. I think that's become all of our specialties. I look at the call and I see a lot of us, I mean, I've worked with a lot of you within the past 12 months, um, whether it's been through the relief, response, or recovery efforts. I also want to mention, um, you know, the Bayou Community Foundation was also instrumental in the United Way for South Louisiana Rental Assistance Program, granting $70,000 for rental assistance, uh, which came at a time where we didn't really, you know, hotel and rental assistance was very important right after the storm. So I just wanted to mention that real quickly. Um, but today I'm here to discuss the Adopt a Classroom project that was rolled out to assist our educators in Terrebonne Parish. Um, after Hurricane Ida, about 90% of our facilities were damaged uh, or destroyed. Two of our four high schools, like you mentioned here at South Terrebonne, were completely destroyed to where they're at portables right now. They're not even inside the facilities, which meant it left a lot of our educators um, picking up the pieces. Not only were their homes destroyed, but also their classrooms as well. So after Hurricane Ida, a call to action was sent out and the Bayou Community Foundation stepped up in a huge way, granting TFAE uh, $100,000 to help with this project. Um, to date, we have been able to assist 174 teachers across Darebone Parish with an average gift of about $800 per teacher, and that varies between $250 a teacher upwards to about $1,500, depending on the severity of the damage that was um, taken on their, to their classroom. We helped 10 separate schools that also, that includes South Terrebonne with the $40,000 donation and also Ellender with the $40,000 donation as well. And these funds go directly to the teachers themselves to purchase just items um, not covered by FEMA or not covered by insurance. I know a lot of you, if you are married to a teacher or you have a teacher relative in the family, you know that a lot of the money that's spent in the classroom comes out of their own pocket. And so these funds um, really helped our educators uh, focus on the relief efforts at home and rebuilding their homes. And they know that we are here to support them in the efforts to get their classrooms up and ready for the students to return initially after the storm. So um, that that's what, and thank you so much, uh, Jennifer, for all that you did and for all the donors help as well, because none of this would have been possible without the collaboration and partnership. Thank you, Ashley. Thank you for everything that TFA is doing. And we know that your support of teachers and schools and students has really been tremendous um, before the storm and especially since the storm. So thank you so much for that. Um, now on to housing recovery, uh, which is really our priority right now. Back in December of 2021, uh, Bayou Community, I'm sorry, November of 2021, Bayou Community Foundation hosted a recovery needs assessment with officials from across Lafourche, Terrebonne and Grand Isle. So we could know where the greatest needs were for additional grant funding. And by far and away, housing recovery was number one. Um, and we have seen that need grow tremendously and the activity of Bayou Community Foundation has tried to grow with it. One of our biggest um, efforts to date is in housing grants and 
so far, Bayou Community Foundation has awarded 20 grants worth over $2.63 million, providing temporary housing assistance, campers for first responders and under-resourced homeowners, appliances, mattresses, household items, and building supplies for home repairs. And of course, our new home construction, uh, which has been um, a very successful program in Dulac and one that we are working to replicate in Grand Isle. The picture you see here is some Mennonite ladies in Dulac making repairs to a home. And that will say directly to our, um, our discussion of Dulac. Over um, the past, I guess about nine months, Bayou Community Foundation has awarded three different grants to Holy Family Catholic Church to provide building supplies for home repair for volunteer, for, for home repair for local residents completed by volunteers. Um, since then, they've spent about 400,000 of that 500,000 so far, and the results have been tremendous with 209 families back home to date, thanks to this program. Uh, so I wanna thank the volunteers at Holy Family Catholic Church for making this happen. I wanna thank um, local vendors, especially Morrison Terrible Lumber uh, for helping us with the supplies and uh, for all the community that has come together to help get people back in their homes uh, through this program. Also, in do, um, because of the success and the organization of those efforts with the home repair project with Holy Family Catholic Church, Bayou Community Foundation was delighted in the fall to welcome Mennonite Disaster Service to our area. And they selected Dulac as a site for a new home construction project. So from January through June of this year, we've had over 400 Mennonite and Amish volunteers with Mennonite Disaster Service Storm Aid living and working in Dulac to help people come back home again along Grand Caillou. With an $850,000 grant from Bayou Community Foundation, which covered um, those first six months of work, MDS volunteers have been able to build eight new homes for residents of that area. They've also been able to repair over 40. And even better news than all of that is that we are delighted to welcome Mennonite Disaster Service back here to Dulac in October for another building season running October of 2022 through May of 2023. And we're so very excited for the, the additional homes that we'll be able to build and replay, repair with their help beginning this October. On the next slide is a message from one of our homeowners, Samantha Thibodeau, who um, moved into her new home built by the Mennonites in June and Samantha had lost everything uh, she owned during Hurricane Ida. And here, oops, here's, I'm sorry, before we get to Samantha, here's a picture of um, some of our homeowners who received new homes over the past six months built with the Mennonites. And here's Hi, Samantha. I'm Samantha Thibodeau. I'm so grateful for the Bayou organization. Um, I would have never imagined losing my home and someone coming in to repair this for me. Well, not even repair. They tore it down and they built me a brand new home. I am so grateful and blessed, truly. I don't know what I would have did if it wouldn't have been for them stepping in and coming to build me a new home. I am so grateful. Thank y'all very much. And thank you, Samantha. Um, it's, it's been a delight to uh, get to know these homeowners and um, hear their stories of so much loss and so much pain. But um, on the day of their home dedications, that is just the most fabulous day of the week. Um, you'll see her here receiving keys um, from the Mennonite volunteer um, on her home dedication day. 
I want to um, mention some of our significant donors for this DULAC project um, because it is an ongoing project and um, we are trying to do so much in the area. Their support of their directed grants are just immeasurable in impact. Um, first of all, the Ray and Kay Eckstein Charity Trust. Um, they are one of our uh, lead donors and um, they recently committed $500,000 for the a new building season beginning in October. And um, with their help, we we're able to raise over a million dollars for that new building season. I also want to recognize Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Louisiana Foundation who have contributed uh, $250,000 through this project, as well as, as significant contributions from the Governor's Hurricane Ida Response Fund at the Baton Rouge Area Foundation, the Greater New Orleans Foundation, and many, many individual donors. Thank you all so very much for helping us rebuild homes, rebuild lives, and rebuild our community in, um, in Southern Terrebonne Parish. We have $1 million pledged so far for the 2022-23 building season. And we are working to build an even greater impact with continued donations over the next few months. But it doesn't stop with DULAC. We, are, we all recognize the tremendous loss in Grand Isle. Uh, no community has had the, uh, the scope, the breadth, the depth of damage as Grand Isle has. And, um, oops, I'm sorry. Um, Bayou Community Foundation is now working with Our Lady of the Isle on a home building project focused on 50 resident families who lost their home in Ida. And to tell us a little bit more about Rebuild Grand Isle, I'll um, show a brief video with Father Mark Toops of Our Lady of the Isle Catholic Church, who will tell us about Rebuild Grand Isle. The story of Grand Isle and Hurricane Ida usually begins with the uh, the fact that the houses take breath away as you travel up and down the island. 70% of the structures on the island impacted by Hurricane Ida. And well over half of structures will have to be demolished. These homes are not just buildings with wood. Ah. Roofs and these homes belong to people. These homes on the island are like icons that bring you into the story of real people's lives. And that's a story that I don't want you to forget about. It's been months since Hurricane Ida hit the shore of Louisiana, but it doesn't mean that people have bounced back. It only means that the story of their life has changed. It's a story worth listening to. Yeah, we were lucky enough when we moved here right a few months before the storm. I was like, when, when it was over with and we found out how bad it was, I was like, I'm ready to go back, ready to see if we could help in some way. And this is where my heart is. I love this place. It's amazing. So I guess when you find a place that you want to call home and you want to put down roots, I mean, rebuilding is rebuilding. I talked to my mom in Lafayette. She was, she said, you know, I never even hear anything about Grand Isle on the news anymore. I said, I know it's sad because people down here need help bad. People cannot forget about us. We need help. We need your help. The people of Grand Isle, the people who are not able to share their voice with you now are asking that you listen to their voice in the story that is Grand Isle and Hurricane Ida. Go to rebuildgrandisle.com to find out more how you can join us in our efforts to help real people, people just like you, who have been devastated by in Ida, people who a year later often feel forgotten, a people who are part of a story. 
There is a story that is Grand Island Hurricane Idol, and the final chapter is yet to be written. You can help us at rebuildgrandisle.com to rebuild Grand Isle, to rewrite the story of the people who've been affected. God bless you. Thank you, Father Mark. Um, Father Mark could not be with us today. He's actually taking a, a vacation, a much deserved vacation. Um, but I thank him for sharing that message with us. It is Bayou Community Foundation's goal to raise um, $2 million to help rebuild Grand Isle. We're currently um, hoping to secure a relationship in, in just about two weeks with a volunteer building group to be stationed on that island and um, start rebuilding homes and repairing homes for residents who need it. We all know that the stability and um, the economic sustainability of Grand Isle depends on residents living there and working there. And I know the mayor is with us and I'm sure he agrees. So that is why we're making um, Rebuild Grand Isle such a priority. So I welcome you to um, take a look at the website um, ask me any questions. If you're interested, make any suggestions. We would love to have your participation in our uh, Rebuild Grand Isle project. And with that, I will um, now go to our guests. Uh, oops, sorry about that. Um, Archie, are you with us? We have with us uh, Lafouche Parish President Archie Chasson to talk about um, briefly some of the ongoing needs that you're seeing in um, Lafourche. Hey, Jennifer, thanks. And first, let me say thank you for all the, the hard work that the BCF has done, uh, not only pre-hurricane, but especially post-hurricane. Um, as you guys have seen with the housing videos, that continues to remain to be the, the, the number one kind of piece of the puzzle that we're missing, right? We can uh, and I'm sure Earl and Mayor Carmendale will tell you the same thing. We can fight with FEMA all day long about reimbursements on our pump stations and our buildings. Uh, we continue to fight with our insurance on things like that as well. But the one key aspect of taking care of our community continues to be housing. We have some 4,000 residents still in temporary housing between the state's non-congregate sheltering program uh, and the FEMA mobile home. So what are, what are we doing with those people um, You know, after those programs run out? The state's non-congregate sheltering program will probably run out sooner than the FEMA program. So that means sometime, and, and I'm guesstimating here, around the end of the year, people are going to have to start to figure out what they're going to do instead of living in that travel trailer. Um, and as we have seen, you know, our apartment complexes, um, what we know as City Place, which is a, a public housing um, unit set uh, that had probably about 500 people in it pre-Hurricane Ida, uh, is, are still destroyed. They're in the same boat that we're all still in with our, our own residences or our businesses, fighting with those insurance and fighting with FEMA to get them rebuilt. We're still fighting with supply chain issues to try to get materials to rebuild those things. And then you compound inflation and the, uh, the, the, the cost rising that we're seeing uh, because of everything else going on in our nation and, and, and in the world, um, it, it just adds a further burden onto that. So as you guys continue to push out housing missions, um, that is going to be critical so we can find some affordable housing key piece to that. We've had a lot of conversations with the governor's office, with uh, Pat Forbes over at the Office of Community Development to try to figure out where those bigger dollars are going to come into play, whether they be through community development block grant funding, whether they be through hazard mitigation funding, so we can build some more affordable housing in some way, shape, or form. Um, you know, the, the, the more storms we see, the more this becomes an issue, uh, and we're going to have to continue to pound that over and over and over again. The second big part of what uh, we're still seeing in the community, and, and especially today being the one-year anniversary, is just the mental health, the, the mental health aspect of, of all of this. Uh, I've said over and over today in all the media interviews that I've done, you know, it's today is a day not to be okay. Uh, we're still dealing with a lot of raw emotions as people are reposting videos on social media of, you know, the roof flying off of their house, the roof coming off a lady to see, um, things like that, and we're, we're reliving all of that whether it was from a, a perspective such as ours in, in government or whether or not you were sitting in your back porch while, while Ida rolled through. Uh, we've done a lot of great work with the Sheriff's Office and Police Social Services with District Attorney Christine Russell and, uh, and Heidi uh, in, in their victims assistance type of programs that they have counselors on staff. Uh, Nicole Bourgeois, who works for us now, has done a great deal of work in, in helping our kiddos and the Head Start deal with you know, how, to, how, to, how does it feel living in a FEMA trailer now instead of your house or in an RV or how to deal with everything that they may see mom and dad or, 
or that parental figure in their life going through. So we'll continue to work through those issues um, with you guys and with our community so we can figure out how best to balance that. Uh, but it's been a year. Um, I like to say Lafouche is open for business. The sun is shining today. I don't think it rained yet, which is a good thing. Um, but we're still here and, and we've made a lot of progress in that year. I'm, I'm pretty, pretty proud of the progress we've made. Um, you know, I don't think anybody thought we'd be as far along as we are, but we've gotten somewhat back to normal. Our kids are back in school. Uh, we saw football jamborees this weekend. Uh, Nichols is back up and running. We ought to see Nichols football in a, in a few weeks. Port Fouchon is back up and running. Um, but for a lot of people, normal is still that FEMA trailer. Normal is still seeing that gutted house every day uh, when they pull back in the driveway or, or, or whatever they're doing. So still a lot of still a lot of hard work left to do, still a long road to hoe, um, but we're getting there. Yeah, thank you, Archie. And um, please know our concern uh, for Lafouche housing is, is just as, as sincere and large as it is for other places in Terrebonne and um, Grand Isle. We are looking for a building, a volunteer building partner in Lafouche as well. Um, so uh, please know that. And uh, if there is any, any groups that you know you can share with us who may be interested in doing some volunteer repairs, um, we are definitely interested in funding that kind of work. So uh, we can talk more after this too. <laughs> I, I just figured David yelled louder than I did. So you got <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, well, speaking of, uh, Mayor David Carmadale from Grand Isle, um, why don't you go ahead and jump in? Yes. Uh, number one, I want to thank El Bayou Community Foundation because um, when the mayor from Mayor Butler called me, told me he had squad cars available. And looking at the vehicles we had, my police department was, you know, we all broke down here. And, uh, I just said, look, I asked him in a meeting, I'm on the bond commission. And he said he had a few cars available. And my heart went out to y'all. I just want to thank y'all so much. And first of all, like the responders that stayed on the island, constantly working with them and through the hurricane. And uh, I was with Wendell Cure all in the lady to see, watching the roof come off. And just the last communication that I had with my guys, so that was number one, they'll take care of responders because they went out and, and and protected a lot of people, picked up a lot of people. So that's number one. And the other thing is, like I said, for y'all to come through with about $90,000 to buy appliances, made a big difference. Made people have a little smile on their face and to see them that uh, they were receiving something. And, and like I said, for $50,000 for the school, made a world of difference and uh, continuing through the months. But uh you know, my mind's a little different, and one of the big battles that I'm definitely fighting right now, and I don't use the word, is, you know, I'm surrounded by water, but one of the key things that I'm really, really pushing hard is and trying to convince the federal government is, you know, we live in a V-zone, and talking to Pat Forbes, like Archie said, you know, when the levees built in Golden Matter all around Lafouche Parish, you're out of a V-zone, and, you know, they wanted to put the trails on, on the other side of the Golden Matter Levy. And I wouldn't allow that to happen. But when President Biden came and I met with the FEMA director, she was real nice. I explained to her, that <clears throat> we wind up putting them in the state park um, and we put about 150 of them on the island. But one of the things that I really want to change the law is where, you know, that uh, I'm, I'm going to continue working with Steve Calise. His guys are coming in uh, September the 1st. I talked to him a few minutes ago before this meeting. I want to show them what it's all about. When I went to a meeting in Jefferson Parish for the community development, all I want to do is, you know, put our people in affordable housing. Oh, in Grand Isle, you can't build it. But right now, I've done issued 35 permits, new constructions that people want to come build, and they're following all the FEMA codes. But according to community development, I can't put them in a V-zone. But just remember, I got land donated. Uh, the man, the company's ready to do it. I got all the blueprints ready to go for 40 units. And I'm fighting uh, community development saying it's in a V zone that can't be done. But my deal and our deal here is that we want to follow all the codes for FEMA. And you can check my record. Always since Hurricane Andrew, anything that was built since Hurricane Andrew would stand as hurricane that just passed. 90% of them talking about. Um, but the bottom line is we follow the laws. And if, if a tourist wants to come in or even somebody retires, or you guys want to come do something on the island, um, you're going to follow the FEMA codes. But I just can't understand why the government won't let me build some housing that people want, you know, and nothing else in the world I'd love to see as a young woman to walk down the stairs, 
15 feet off that, like our homes are elevated, following all the laws and put a kid in a school bus and put it a half a mile away, a mile away from the school, which I really thought we had 40 kids in the school. We got 82, 82 of them that's here. And every day I get phone calls, they want to come home. And I'm proud to tell you that working with Father Mike, Mark, and working with you guys, you know, by your community, it was unbelievable working through Bob, Bob Stewart and the Friends of Grand Isle and all the people that support us. We need to move on this. Um, today, I got a call and we talked to some of the people that's involved with y'all. I'm going to go ahead and waive everything I got to do so you can bring any of the campus behind the Catholic Church. Uh, we're working with the state and we're going to make sure that uh, you guys can come in so we can house y'all to help us. And I guarantee you there won't be nobody stopping you because I declared that this morning at 10 after 8 to let you know that we welcome y'all here. Bring them on. Um, whatever we got to do to help y'all put them in place. We need you people. We need y'all to come. You know, I'm losing families. I lost three employees. I lost my gas guy that's uh, just certified. And, and we bought a truck. Uh, y'all, all, everybody participated, all ages, to help us build a gas, buy a gas truck. Got all the equipment and everything that everybody put together here. But I lost my supervisor, Chris Hernandez, who worked 24 years with me. He had enough. But he's still on the island. He's got another job. But all in all, it just brings tears to me, you know, that I got to lose some families. So we're on the right track. They're all excited um, for you all to come in and, and make it affordable housing. Yeah. But it's just things like that that uh, I want to tell you. On behalf of all the residents of Grand Isle, Grand Isle's open like Audrey, working with Audrey Chasson and working with, you know, Gordy Dove and all the neighboring parishes. Unbelievable. They've been hands off on with us. Again, uh, tourism has been great. Uh, we opened kind of late, the few minutes we had, but people love Grand Isle. In fact, I just went on the beach earlier today. They catch a shrimp with a cast net again. So you can't do that, Destin. Can't no. do that, in Texas. But again, thank y'all so much for everything. Thank you, thank you, Mayor. And um, the the trailers he the campers he was talking about. Um, just to let you know, is the um, volunteers called Nomads with the United Methodist Church will be arriving um, in October to live on the island for several months. These are couples, retired couples who will be living in RVs and they all have some skill with regard to construction um, or, or building repairs and they will be making repairs on many homes on the island. So we're looking forward to, uh, to welcoming the, the nomads on the island. Thank you very much, Mayor, for, um, for accommodating them. We appreciate that. Yes, ma'am, no problem. Uh, Carol Parish Director of Homeland Security, Earl Hughes, had to step away um, from the call to do a media interview. Uh, Earl, are you back? Maybe not. Okay, well, we'll catch up with Earl again next time. Uh, I want to thank him for joining us for the call, and um, I certainly understand that he had to take another phone call. Well, with that, um, I will turn it over to any questions or comments. If anyone has a question or comment, I welcome you to just um, unmute your, your mic and go ahead. Going once, going twice. Great job. Thank you, Mayor. I do want to uh, say I see one um, Bayou Community Foundation board member on the call with us, uh, JJ Buque, welcome. And is there any other Bayou Community Foundation board member with us this afternoon? I don't see any names. Oh, I do see State Representative Jerome Zizarang. Welcome, Z, to the call. All right. Well, I just want to... Um, end by thanking all of you for what you all have done, whether you're a nonprofit, a resident, a donor, um, for all you have done for our recovery. Uh, Bayou Community Foundation is grateful to you and we're grateful for everyone whose selfless contributions have allowed us to do the work we have been able to do over the past year and we're not done yet. Um, in addition to all of the building work we will be doing in Grand Isle and Dulac and Lafouche in the coming months, in the coming year, we continue to offer other grants to nonprofits for other critical 
services and programs to help in ride recovery. Uh, mental health, as Archie mentioned, is one of our big priorities. Uh, and we're now looking to help nonprofits who have some of those services that are, that are starting. So if you're a nonprofit out there working in the mental health field, and uh, we'd love to, to work with you and talk with you more about that. I think Earl might've just joined us, Earl. Hey, Jennifer. Hey, you, you get the, uh, the final word, Earl. Well, you know, the, the thing I'd like to say the most is that, uh, you know, the government can't do this by ourselves. And it's so great to see all the non-governmental organizations and all the organizations across our parishes, uh, in our area, the state of Louisiana, even across the country that have provided uh, services and funding uh, to our residents in this area to help us recover. You know, we're very resilient here in Terrebonne and Lafourche and in Southeast Louisiana, but we can't do it by ourselves. And, and it's grateful to, to see organizations such as you guys at the Bayou Community Foundation uh, to spearhead getting these donations in and helping our residents. Uh, I do want to make a mention. I know I'm toward the end of the program, but uh, the governor did announce last week when we had a meeting with him that uh, Restore Louisiana will be contributing some funding uh, to our area uh, through the HUD Community Development Block Grant Program, uh, approximately um, uh, $1.2 billion have been designated uh, for Hurricane uh, Ida recovery uh, and, and to help rebuild our communities. Uh, all I can ask at this present time is that, you know, people go to the restore.la.gov website, uh, complete the survey, uh, and um, when the funds become available, they'll use those surveys to determine eligibility. But this money won't be available real quick. I mean, just for Hurricane uh, Laura, they're just expending funds on that program right now, which was two years after uh, Laura hit that community. So it'll probably be Hopefully it won't be as much time, but it may be uh, within the next year and a half to two years when this funding uh, becomes available. But it is important that people go online and do the, uh, the survey uh, to show the needs in this area. Very good. Thank you so much for that, Earl. We will um, stay in touch with you and, and try to let residents and nonprofits know about that, um, that project. Thank you so very much. Thank you. Um, well, with that, we'll, uh, we'll close this virtual impact report. I welcome at any time any of you to email me, call me. Um, the email address is armandj at bayoucf.org. Give me a call. You can find all the con contact information on our website at bayoucf.org. If you have a suggestion, a question, um, anything you'd like to share, please, please contact us. We want to hear from you. We want to make sure that um, the grant dollars that we have, the, the amazing contributions that donors throughout the country have invested in Bayou Community Foundation for this area's recovery are spent in the wisest and most effective way to get our people back home um, to restore lives and our community. So please be in touch. Thank you very, very much for joining us this afternoon and have a wonderful afternoon and evening. Keep up the good work. Thank you.